Here we are, believe it or not, everybody. Oh, here we are. <laughs> Welcome to Friday Night Live Wednesday edition. Hey now, hey now. <laughs> we uh, uh, we're actually very surprised that we're doing this because here's here's what happens every time we feel like we're in a good place where we can consistently do over the line live. Mm-hmm. Unless you're listening on the backside, um, which I don't like calling it live. I want to call it something else. I just want to call it the over the line just show. Just say OTL. OTL show. No, don't don't put show after that. Well, the thing is, is when we feel like we're in a place where we can do this once a week, something happens. <laughs> Are you going to tell them what happened today? And I got, <laughs> I mean, my plans almost got completely railroaded today. Y'all, y'all ready to hear this? So I, as y'all know, I do me and do three times a week. All right. You want to show them your muscles? Yeah. Look at this. You can't <laughs> see. I'm wearing black. Well, pull your sleeve up. Show them that black. muscle. Um. So let me move this guy real quick. I feel like it's hindering me. Okay. So. So. I do man do three times a week. Mm-hmm. I've progressed tremendously in my man do journey. Yes. All right. Muscles are building up, losing weight, metabolism's up, back feels better, all that jazz. Um, we've gotten to a point where my trainer Caleb is like, We're gonna we're gonna shoot for to see how long we can keep you at one hundred, which is the overall setting of one hundred. And you're on different levels at different times. Right. Um, so the last two times we have pushed it and that was the case today. And I thought, God, I'm like extra tired after this when this is, you know, it's not, doesn't feel normal. Um, but I was fine. I was just sweaty and out of breath and everything else. And so I talked to Paul, the owner for a few minutes and, and as I was talking to him, I started feeling dizzy and I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I, 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 so I went ahead and I went to the car and I sat in the car and it just kept getting worse. And it was just dizzier and dizzier. And it felt like, you know, when, when you're about to black out and it's like creeping up on you, uh, it was that. And I was like, okay, I'm I'm about to pass out. I said, I don't need to pass out in the car out here because it's 85 degrees outside. Right. Let me go back inside of Mandu, let them know and uh, say, hey, if I, if I'll see me in the floor here in a few minutes, just like call the ambulance or something. And I had to sit in there for like an hour before I could regain my wits because... I was feeling that dizzy. Mm-hmm. There were there was two or three times where I was like, okay, it's gone. I stood up and it came right back. Right. And it wasn't because of Mandu. No. Because obviously I've been doing Mandu for five months now. Almost six months. Actually, your, it has been six months. I think it's your blood pressure. I think you need to get your blood pr- pressure checked. And of course, they asked me that question of, well, what did you eat today? They huh. know what? They don't, I don't eat during the day. What did mm-hmm. you eat today? Well, nothing. Big fat well, nothing. That's probably why you're passing out, buddy. That's true. Maybe it is like sugar levels or something. But I, knew, yo, I thought I was going to be in the hospital today for real. You want to show them the picture you sent me? Yeah, we can. I don't know <laughs> if it'll show up on the camera. Hold on. Yeah, I get a message from him while I'm working, and uh, he's like, I don't know. I may, I may be in trouble over here. And of course, I panic and want an ambulance to get involved and everything. Because I is, can't just say relax, you know. This is what I look like. <laughs> I don't know I just if they looking, can see that. <laughs> looking down at the phone, I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> so then I asked him when he gets home, I'm like, are you sure you feel up to doing this? He's like, we're not canceling. <laughs> no, we, we do enough canceling. Yes. And, you know, we, we don't want to overdo the podcast. Obviously, there's a brand new one out now for you guys to listen with Will the Chub Father. Mm-hmm. Um, which How is fantastic. Go, by the way, it was great. It was absolutely have great. Have to watch it. Do we want to? You, you know, when we did the John Bird one, we played like sixty seconds of it. Do we want to do some. a little teaser real quick? Sure. Let's see if we can't do that real fast. Um, we've also got new equipment up here in the studio. Tony fancy. came over while I was on the radio and installed these uh, these fancy monitors you can see the chat finally i can see the chat that's been the biggest thing oh i need my keyboard back Uh oh get on it that's been the biggest thing is the fact that uh you haven't been able to see 
the freaking chat on the screen because it it was the position. It, it these monitors are about twice as big as the ones we had, mm -hmm. almost. Oh, easy, yeah, for sure. All right, let's see if we can find a little over the line here. And I'm just again, we're just. I'm gonna pick you something random on here. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't know what part of the podcast this, that, and the other is, but we'll just we'll just throw this on you and just see what happens. Okay. What do we got here? I have no idea what we're talking about at this point. We had enough stamps to talk to the neighbors to the left and to the right of us and say, what do you guys need from the grocery store? Yeah. And so my dad was taking our food stamps, getting just the necessities of what we needed, and then using, you know, the rest of it to buy groceries for the neighbors. The neighbors. Yeah. You know, so it, it's, it, it's, it's strange because I see this side of my dad where he's always mad and angry at me, but, but, but the entire time... I'm still seeing his example, and I think that it's the thing that made me never want to just be like, screw you, old man. Yeah. I'm done. Because it would be easy for you to do. Absolutely. To only look at the bad stuff, but I think those things are what help you uh, differentiate between what's the alcohol and what's him. Sure. Absolutely, man. You know, so it was, it, it was absolutely amazing to, to get that in-depth with Will. Again, that's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and then you can obviously watch it on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. um, just a fantastic interview, man. It, it talked about so many things that I didn't, I didn't know anything about. It was funny because when we started, he was very low-key, monotone, like... It was almost, and, and I know if he didn't want to do it, he wouldn't do it. Right. Although he had, he is a man of his word and he had committed. So maybe he didn't want to do it. <laughs> and after we sat here for a while and he kind of started to understand what kind of podcast I'm shooting for on there, he started to really open up. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a progression, but it was really fascinating to, to listen to. Yeah. I can't wait to, to watch it. I've heard a lot of good feedback about it. The only thing I want to say is that we need to figure out a mic situation where we can see your faces. Yeah. I, because that kind of kills the whole vibe when you are just staring at the microphone. If you know? I can um, if I can figure out how to get these stands, they don't they don't ever want to do it, but if I can get them to where they'll just point up like this and mm -hmm. we can talk like this. What if I found off. like some countertop? I guess maybe it's hard for you because I got, I got you've got all that stuff right yeah. there, but I prefer the arm. Makes me feel like I'm in radio. Um, well, I told you I want to get headphones that are like earbuds because I don't like these over my head. So maybe I'll look for that and look for um, <clears throat> maybe at least just for the guest have something lower. I don't yeah. know. Because that's, that's a thing I see is that people are kind of hiding behind the mic. Uh, by the way, Kim says, you better say hi to her. She I says, did. I texted her and said hello. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's like, you see me. You better say hi. <laughs> So kind of what we wanted to do with this podcast in particular, first of all, we want to put content on the website and thank you all who have gone to the website and subscribed. Mm -hmm. um, we had listeners texting the, the radio show today saying that they were so excited to wake up to an email titled Hey Now and uh, get, the, get the first sneak peek on the Will the Chub Father interview. Yeah. They were they were all excited about that and and that's the kind of stuff we're going to do. Like if you're signed up at andrewmcclainwho.com, you don't have to worry about us bombarding you with emails or anything like that. It's just I'm literally writing the email. Trish is making it look fancy and professional <laughs> and we're sending it. You're not getting it from some stupid automated service because we all know all of our emails are full of just garbage that where they somebody forced yeah. us to sign up for something. Now we can't get it to stop. So there's uh there's Well, that. and the whole point of it is that we want you to know that when we send you something, it's something we really want you to see. It's important. So we don't want to put a bunch of junk in there so that you just bypass them all, you know? That's exactly right. And, uh, yeah, the merch as well. Yeah. So you want to talk about... Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> when it comes to the merchandise, we bit off more than we thought we were going to be able to chew, at least in a certain time frame. Um, well, I think I think you got excited and started talking about it too early. Yeah, absolutely. Because there was a lot of steps I knew we had to take. 
so to we make it happen. We got about four or five more hurdles to jump, but we I think we're closer <laughs> now than we've been thus far. So here, let me, and I'm just going to give you all some insight because you're kind of the core group. Yeah, the we were we were going to go through a, a third party that was going to print on demand and ship the shirts, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, it was going to mean all the items are going to be coming from different places, which means you were going to have to pay shipping on each item instead of just one package. Not only that, but the prices on each individual item was going to have to be higher than it would normally be. And we decided, you know what? Let's not do this. Let's do the legwork ourselves. Right. So we contacted somebody local. Mm -hmm. And ironically enough, when we sat down with her, uh, you know, she's got her own business and everything. She turns out to be like super conservative <laughs> like us. Uh, nonetheless, it's going to be much easier for that us to do that. And not only not only are you going to be, you know, paying or, or, or supporting local small business. Mm -hmm. You're going to be getting this stuff directly from us. You know, I right. may even drop you a note in there. It says, yeah, hey, now, it's going to come whatever. straight from us. Well, and we've got one more um, place we want to talk to just to see the quality of the shirts, the turnaround time, all of that. Um, and after we talk to them, we'll make a decision on which place we're going to use, but both are local. Um, the one we talked to yesterday just happens to be someone I've used probably 10 times in the past at my previous uh, job. So I'm friends with the lady. Um, but yeah, it's good quality, good t-shirt material. That was one thing we didn't really like the, the samples we got in. I wasn't crazy about it. You know, he's a guy, so he doesn't really, he doesn't really care. But um, the samples were all real nice. We got to go through all the different t-shirts yesterday and kind of feel them and make sure we're getting good quality and it's going to be cheaper Yep. for you guys. So just bear with us. And then we got to do the business license thing and all that kind of stuff. So. As you see, some people yeah. have been waiting for two years for a t-shirt. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time. <laughs> I've got, and what's funny is y'all see me sometimes and I'm wearing a, a line shirt, the line shirt, and uh, I don't wear it that much because on the back, it's got the logo of the, old, the old station. station yeah. That's one thing. Some of y'all may not like this, but with our merch, it's not going to have any 99.5 logos or anything like that on it. Yeah. If you want 99.5 merchandise, I can tell you exactly where to get it. Yeah. Um, because uh, Richard Dixon's girlfriend makes 99.5 merch so we're more than happy to get y'all the info on that front uh if that's what you want to do but the line over the line we need to make sure we have both and, and yeah. i don't know how much either either of those will sell because there's a lot of the radio audience that doesn't understand the difference between the line and over the line right. which tells me i probably should have named this <laughs> podcast something else but to be honest with you how many times do i have to ask for clarification <laughs> <laughs> True, and I'm here. So, yeah. well, and she had a great idea yesterday about um, just releasing the basic line and over the line, and then waiting a few weeks and releasing another pattern just to kind of get a feel for what people are going to want. And I think that's a great idea too. Yeah. So, but it's coming. We just, you know, he got a little excited talking about it on the radio before we fully knew everything we were going to have to do. To make it actually happen. <laughs> I just got a little antsy. You got a little antsy, mm. but... You know what's funny? What's um, that? Did you watch our Facebook Live from today? Yes, I did. Well, so, I, I... Okay, can I be honest? You didn't watch it. I did watch it, but I kind of skipped through the whistling thing. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, it, it wasn't <laughs> that entertaining, but... Well, it's not because it wasn't entertaining. I was just working, so I had to hurry. Well, what was crazy is we had probably two and a half times the amount of people in there for the live portion as we normally do. I noticed there were 30 people. And I thought, that's pretty good. Like, you know, yeah. it's kind of hard because it's afternoon. People are wrapping up work, so it's hard for to get people on there. We, we're more kind of like this podcast. We're more worried about people watching it on the backside. And I was like, that's weird. I wonder wonder why that's happening. Maybe we're getting more popular. Maybe people like us better. Mm -hmm. No, it was because John Bird posted uh, the title, Important oh. Announcement. You, he can't, you cannot cry wolf like that. Mm. People are going to stop. They're going to stop. Because that stuff pops up in people's notifications. Like, you'll get an actual notification that says 99.5 and that capital letters, Important Announcement. I'm like, come on, Cole. He did that one time before. Did he? Yeah, he did. 
What do you say? I, something just like that. That was probably me. I think this is the only time he's ever oh. done the title. I usually do it, but I do it from his phone. Yeah, because I remember watching thing and oh my God, what's going on? What's happening? And it was something dumb. Oh my God. It was something dumb. <laughs> so, um, the the shtick, the shtick, the shtick. Watch it there. Here on <laughs> Over the Line is we want to kind of keep this. You know, we may talk about politics every now and then, but we want to keep this to where we're just kind of talking about the stuff of the week. Since this is once a week, yeah. you know, just kind of doing Light our own thing. stuff, because Trish doesn't want to talk politics. Right, 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 And right. you can talk about the stuff you couldn't get to on the show. Exactly. That's what I'm going mm-hmm. for. With that said... What you got for let's us? Let's talk about the politics of Bud Light. <laughs> no, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, okay. I no, 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 no. Okay. I, I'm, I want to just talk about a minute of the reaction, not the actual controversy itself. Mm-hmm. That topic has been beaten to death. Yes. But I came across some videos of people taking their protest of, of Anheuser-Busch to the next level. Right. Okay. And there's a lot of different creative ways. And you all know this. I've said this on the show. I've said it over and over because people hammer me for... You're wearing Nike. You're doing this. You, they were uh, Coors Light had an ad one time with a gay pride flag, and I was drinking a Coors Light the other night. People just get all over me about that. I, I don't care about boycotts. I don't, if I boycotted everything I disagree with, I wouldn't listen to any music. I wouldn't <laughs> no, own right? anything. I'd be I'd be using a payphone. And he disagrees with me at least once a day. He wouldn't yeah. be married. I okay. Mean. <laughs> okay. You just got to deal with. It. But these people, and I don't have a problem with people boycotting, and it's easy to boycott Bud Light because there's, or Anheuser Busch because there's so many beers. These people took their protest to the next level. All right. Okay. I want you to watch this. Let's see it. This guy is pulling Anheuser Busch products off the shelf in a Walmart and slamming them on the ground. Oh my gosh. Oh, now, I don't know that he's doing that because of the protests, but he just happens to be pulling down Anheuser Busch products. But, okay, see, when I see stuff like this, I just don't feel like people are that unhinged that they're going to go into the store and tear up the display just because of the marketing campaign. This dude's probably upset about something else. Yeah, I just feel like, you know. I, uh, y'all know I'm a conspiracy theorist. I feel like a lot of this stuff is just to com- continue to to create divide and don't feel like this is genuinely a real protest. Like, who really cares what's on the can, honestly? Why? You know? Yeah. I mean, I see people getting upset because they're tired of people going woke, quote unquote, businesses like the, what's that teddy bear st- store that you stuff your own teddy bear? Build a bear. Build a bear. Where build, they, build they, a burger. Yeah. What did they do? They introduced a trans bear or a gay bear or something at the same time as the Anheuser Busch thing. And you know, I understand people are are getting tired of these companies going woke for no. You know, like why are you even talking about it at Build a Bear? You know, um, I just don't see somebody going into a store and tearing up a display. Yeah. I mean, do you think that's what it's over? Uh, I, I have no idea. I don't, I don't know any context about this guy in particular. Yeah. I, that's why I said I, I don't know. He could be mad about something else. He just happened to be smashing Anheuser-Busch products. But there he goes. Getting a nice escort out by police. I mean, maybe we do have stupid people. Well, we do have stupid They're people. Quite the crowd. About, but. Man, he made a mess, cuz. Look at that. Look at this sticker. Did you see? No, what does it say? <laughs> the sticker. Hold on. Let me back it up. Let me back it up. Ah, uh, where you at? Here we go. Here we go. For rectal use only. Now, that I do see people doing. <laughs> I do see people doing that. Somebody <laughs> took stickers from the doctor that says for rectal use only and put it on all the Bud Light boxes. Is that a pair of... Uh, it's like a back of jeans. I, I was thinking I those was, are short shorts. Are those sunglasses or uh Those are jorts. <laughs> they, those are either jorts or it's an owl wearing glasses. Oh my gosh. Now that I do see people doing. Those are the same people that put those Joe Biden stickers on all of the, the gas pumps. That's pretty creative. Okay. here th- This is next level. 
These people showed their newfound disdain for the brand by smashing beer cans. Now, they've got a cement roller or something here. And you see how many cases, like, first of all, where did that come from? Or is this a situation where this is footage? I'm just, I'm just guessing. Is this footage from one of these country artists that said we're no longer going to sell Bud Light in our, our bars or at whatever. our at our concerts? Yeah, and so they've got an overstock of Bud Light, and then they got to find a creative way to smash it. It's good marketing for the uh, for the tour. Yeah, look at that. Look, it's just rolling on top of them. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. To me, all of this stuff is absurd. <laughs> it makes for a good video. It's absurd, though. Look at that poor I mean, guy. they got their money already, you know? Well, and honestly, when it comes down to it, it the, the ladies of The View said something along the lines of, oh, yeah, you, you bought that beer, and you're, you're over there smashing it, or you're Kid Rock, and you're shooting it. It's like, yeah, but, you know, what they're doing is a symbol or a signal message they're sending that that's the last one they're going to buy. Right. Go, so, woke, yeah, go broke. Maybe they maybe they bought that one, but uh -huh. they're not buying any more, and so you're going to lose far more money than you made from just that one round of Bud Light that they bought. Well, the only way I'd see somebody going into a store and getting arrested like that is if maybe they were a distributor or somebody that stocked the beer and they lost their job because of this whole... You know, because they're saying a lot of these these people in the bars have what this guy. Uh, well, this this is the guy right here. This is uh, one of the distributors that goes to the stores and stocks the shelves. Listen to him. Okay. I work for an affiliate company. I am a merchandiser, and the sole product of the company I work for is Anheuser Busch products. So with all this canceling going on. Um, there's, I mean, I've never seen such little sales in this past few days uh, on these products. And it's, it's sad because when people don't buy this beer, I don't make money, and I can't feed my family. So it's kind of uh, heartbreaking, I guess, that um, Anheuser-Busch did what they did. They don't know their clientele. So it's uh, kind of heartbreaking. Thanks, Anheuser-Busch. I may not be able to feed my family coming up here soon. Now, that's depressing if you think about but it. But you know what? I feel like they do know their audience. I think they do know their consumer. Well, if you want to get technical I about the... I think that the, they know exactly who their consumer is and exactly what the reaction was going to be. If you want to be technical about the story, and we, we talked about that guy in particular. We played his audio on the radio mm -hmm. show. Um, the CEO came out and said, we didn't know anything about this. This was just it. somebody from the Bud Light branch, a vice president that was one of these young hipsters that, that thought, oh, we need to get more young people because our sales are slumping, blah, 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 blah. Because Anheuser-Busch, and here's what's crazy. Anheuser-Busch traditionally donates about, donates equally between Democrats and Republicans. And actually, Republicans, I think, have a slight edge 60-40. Um, they've never come out and just taken a side, but if you were to watch their commercials from previous years, or they, they were always very patriotic. They were, if you, if you had to attach a, a political party to it, you would say, oh, that's a right-leaning company. So when the, when, the, when the CEO says that they didn't realize that one of their brands was going to be picking a side i kind of believe it but i don't think that absolves them from the consequences i think bad decisions are made in companies every day and it just happens to cost you millions and millions of dollars that's, but see that's that's where we differ in that opinion because they know that decisions like this can cost them their company so these companies have a very tight rein on the image that they put out and you have to go through lots and lots of steps of getting things authorized, approved. Just like when we talked about um, that whole, what was that company? I'm drawing a blank. Search that Kim Kardashian posed for and all that. Oh, I have no idea. No, remember 
we Balenciaga. talked about it, Balenciaga. When Balenciaga came out and said, oh, the photographer went rogue on us and this is what they did. Bull, these companies have a very tight rein on their advertising. They do not just let one wild person make a decision that could cost them their company. I'm gonna yeah. tell you that right now. Well, and they I, got a scapegoat, but they they didn't they didn't not know. The the reason I'm on the other side of that is is simply because I mean Anheuser Busch is such a large company, but when it came to the 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 brand attaching itself to Dylan Mulvaney, they never put out any commercials. They never did anything other than they sent 365 beers, or they sent beer to commemorate his 365 days of womanhood, mm-hmm. right? And then he made a video on his own social media about it. Now, they may have known in their mind, hey, we're going to do this, right. he's going to promote it, and then it's going to look good for us, which obviously it did not. Um, but I think I would feel that way if, in fact, Bud Light or anheuser Bush made a full-blown commercial that they were running on as TV ads. Let me ask you this. Do you see more branding when you're scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok versus on television? How many commercials a day do you think you're exposed to through influencers on your social media versus a commercial on TV? Well, and social media's got the advantage, too, because right. they're watching all your stuff and targeting the ads. But my point is, they're these influencers have to go, and I only know this because I've watched a lot of my influencers going through the stages of getting ads approved, getting content approved so that they can get paid for it and all that. They know what they're doing. They know who they're marketing to. They know what they're doing. And I don't buy for two. Now, do I buy that the CEO didn't know? Yes. But a majority of the people in that company that have anything to do with like the VPs and all that, they knew what was going to happen. This is not, this is not random stuff. Now, let's watch people blow up some Bud Light. I'm out. <laughs> Woo! There's, uh, there's bring, Robert let's Ritchie. Let's bring the guns into this, please. This is Bob Ritchie. <laughs> Bud Light and <laughs> Anheuser Busch. And they put the little Bud Light thing up there when he flipped it off. I love Kid Rock so much. Yeah. I really do. He's uh he's a true he's a true patriot. Have you seen the video that's going viral right now of the teacher and student that got into a fight over a phone? I I feel like I've seen a million of those. Oh my gosh. So this girl, um I want to say they say she's middle school but she looked older than that, but she went up to the teacher and told her she wanted her phone back and the teacher of course was like, "No, I've taken your phone away. It's you know, it's mine for the for the hour. And she swung on the teacher, and the teacher took her down. Like, beat the crap out of her. Good. I know. And then the mom is on TV. My daughter, she shouldn't have. I mean, my daughter was not in the wrong. She wasn't that bad what happened. and Shouldn't oh. have gone to school where John Cena is your teacher. Man, John you need to find that video. I want you to watch it. Well, let's, let's do this first, since what we're we? already on the topic of influencers. Okay. So I, I came across this when we were uh, when we were getting ready for the show. Because I, being honest, when we do these shows, we don't really have time for anything else in our life. So I put together the show in about a ten minute span. Right. But it's easy because I do this all day, every day, so it's easy for me to find stuff. I literally was clocking out of work as I was throwing on something to put to, to do the show. I saw this story. <laughs> Influencer admits she killed two cats as a child and immediately gets hit with fierce backlash. Now, I don't know who this influencer is. Context, please. An Australian (laughs) influencer admitted Monday that she killed two cats. Uh, She said, blah, blah, blah. Emma Clare, 28-year-old influencer and co-host of a podcast called Simply Chaotic. Now, this lady right here gives us, I, I, I briefly watched this, and this girl apparently gives some backstory on uh, what exactly is is the story here. So let me see if I can't 
Play an that. Australian influencer has been dropped by a skincare brand after revealing a childhood secret. Yes, we're talking about Emma Claire and Emco Beauty. Emma revealed that she Do you know either one of those? Emma no. Claire and M Emco Beauty? No. She killed not only one, but two cats when she was a child. She made the confession on the podcast show Simply Chaotic, saying, I killed my cat. My sister did not speak to me for months and my mum was f***ing fuming at me. Then she also revealed that she killed her best friend's cat too. Emma released an initial statement saying that her comments were a bit of light humour, but everyone else kind of went, huh? You know, that makes me nervous because I told a, sh a story on the radio show one time about how when I was a kid... Uh, I had to watch my dad shoot a dog, but mm -hmm. the dog was dying. So it's right. different, right? Um, I mean, I assume so. I know that a lot of people do that. We just got canceled. I didn't get canceled. Well, congratulations <laughs> on your new show. That's really not funny. She added, it happened 21 years ago. I was a small child. Accidents happen. You all need to chill. But needless to say, the backlash did not go unnoticed. Leading to Emco Beauty confirming that they would no longer be working with Emma in the Oof. She got canceled future yikes and soon after emma posted a second apology saying i am well aware the story was not light humor and in fact very serious i have taken the time to think about my actions and want to confirm that i do have empathy i deeply apologize and i hope we can leave it there should emma have been dropped by the brand let us know your thoughts let us know I mean, your thoughts okay i'm not gonna say what i was thinking just say it no it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of what Mean, uh, ugly, <laughs> bigoted. No. <laughs> what is it? Say it. Uh, no, I'm not gonna say it. Oh my god! <laughs> I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay. I was just gonna say she should have said she was talking about a different kind of cat. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> just, just deny it all the way around. She said, "I'm gay." Be Anheuser Bush and just deny it. Yeah. <laughs> she'd be like you bunch of bigots. I'm gay. That's what I was talking, talking about, about. My best friends. You know. <laughs> Makeup and skincare brand Imco Beauty is the name of the place that she was hooked up with. Uh, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. The Australian influencer posted another story on Instagram. That's what the lady just told. Okay, blah, blah, blah. That's all. So a person we've never heard of who's hosting a podcast we've never heard of got canceled by... A makeup company we've never heard of. Wow, so glad I brought that story to the table. Well, I mean, okay, but let's think about this. If you had killed animals as a child, would you brag about it 20 or 30 years later? Yeah, it'd be interesting to hear the context and how she said it. It sounds like she they were having a lighthearted conversation, and then she well, inserted that. That paragraph I just read said she had anger issues and mental disorder as a child. Yeah. So <laughs> I wonder if she was serious. I don't know. Um, talking about the teacher, all right, mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of violence in school as of late, and maybe it's just normal, and the fact that everybody's got phones and everybody's recording kind of highlights it. We kind of look at old news that way. Um, did you see the video of the wrestling match where this guy gets beat, and when they shake hands, he's so angry, he punches his opponent when they go shake hands? No. You have not seen this. No, I've not seen this. Yeah. This one is uh this is pure savagery, all right? And I I mean, my first thought is if that's my kid that got punched, uh I might have to go out there and tackle that other kid. Mm -hmm. If my kid's the one that throws the punch, I'll probably tackle my kid too right. and tell him that's the last match you ever wrestled. Mm -hmm. Watch this. This is the uh this is the moment it happened. You missed that throw, dude. They go up, gold wins, blue loses, blue says, do! It kind of reminds me of that uh, that basketball player that did the same thing. Remember when they were shaking hands, walking across, and she punched the girl in the face? No. Oh, yeah, 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 the, the, <laughs> the, the, the uh, women's basketball. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is, I mean, watch this hit. That was a sucker hit. punch, man. Oh, right in the nose, too. Yeah. That's savage. Yeah, that kid can get should, should get the uh, fullest extent of the punishment that they can dole out on him mm -hmm. because, uh, let's see. It goes on to say, da -da -da -da, things turned ugly very quickly after an Illinois youth wrestling match. 
that saw a wrestler completely suck a punch and knock out his opponent after he got destroyed in the match. Oak Park, Illinois, Oak Park River Forest High School. You think you can throw a couple more things in there? <laughs> Oak Park River Lake <laughs> Woods <the> Forest <laughs> a Waterfall Cliff <laughs> Mountain High School. There you go. Hosted the Beat the Streets tournament, ironically. Uh, and at one point during the event, Maine West High School's Hafid Alicia was beaten by Spar Wrestling Academy's Cooper Quarter. A qu- quarter, is that how you say it? And not only did Alicia take a loss, he was absolutely hammered, evident of the 14-2 final match score. After the contest, the referee brought both the wrestlers to the center of the ring to shake hands and announced Quarter as the winner. However, things went horribly wrong, as you saw. Went to shake his hand, but instead punched him hard. Right in the face and sit him down to the floor. Parents were obvious, uh, absolutely livid at Alicia screaming in his direction before ultimately running over to assist quarter. The referee making sure nothing escalated between the parents and the students sent Alicia Matt side away from the scene. You should go send him Matt side. You should send him to the house. Probably send him to the police station. For sure. Quarter reportedly suffered a broken nose and unfortunately will be forced to wear special face masks when he wrestles upcoming matches. Talking with TMZ Sports, Oak Park Police Department spokesman said Tuesday that the parents of both minors are cooperating with the investigation. Oof. That's, uh, here's the full match. We ain't gonna watch the full match. No. Um, but yeah, that's, that's crazy. They would just sucker punched him. Pow, right in the kisser. People have lost their minds, like. People have full-on lost their minds anymore. There was another instance of Draymond Green, uh, NBA player, that where he got suspended or something for stepping on a player yes, on the have court. have you not seen that? I hadn't seen it. He stomped straight down on his chest. Let's see if we can watch this. Oh, yeah. I have not seen it. What's the the punishment? Hold on. Let's just, let's just get this right. Here's the story. Let me just read it, and then we'll watch it. Uh, for the Golden State Warriors main group, they've played a whopping 28 playoff series together with four championship rings on their fingers. And as a result, there isn't much left Dub Nation hasn't seen, like being 0-2 in a series. Okay, so they're 0-2 in the series, and he's frustrated. I'm getting it. Golden State hasn't seen 0-2 since 2007, which happened in the Western Conference semifinals against the Utah Jazz. However, history switched up Monday night when the Warriors took a 114 to 106 defeat to the Sacramento Kings, which now has them down 0 and 2 in their in-state rival. There were a lot of reasons why Golden State lost, including missed up, blah 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 blah. Well, frustration obviously flooded the Warriors star power forward Draymond Green, uh, who ended up getting ejected from the game with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter after outright stomping on Kings forward uh, Demontis. Sabonis, I don't know how to pronounce his name, following uh, Warrior Superstar point guard, Steph Curry getting a defensive rebound and then heading back, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Let's just watch it. How about that? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just I'm wanted to set it up a, for myself. I'm start putting a limit on these uh, articles. All right. I just wanted to set the segment up for myself so I knew what was going on. Plus, I need time to pull this up. All right. We're ready? Yes, we're ready. Let's try this now. Draymond Green, take it away. As he goes out, watch him grab Draymond right there. Oh! Now, that right there. And then jumped up on him. Foul came in. That ain't a foul, cuz. So he grabs Draymond's leg right there. Now Draymond steps on him. No, that ain't no foul. That's no. Stone Cold Steve Austin stubbing a mud hole in your ass. <laughs> that's what that is. They used, that, that's exactly what Stone Cold used to do back in the day. He'd have him in the corner and he'd just... Mm. Duh, duh, duh. Like, I mean, did, anyway, <laughs> people have lost what, their minds. What is your explanation for this? Please explain. Why would this... How could this happen in the NBA? I'm asking you. You're What's, asking me how that happens? Yeah, how could something like this happen? Because we have lost our minds as a society. <laughs> that's that's how. This one says Draven Green stomps uh, DeMontis Sabanis and then acts like this with the NBA commissioner Adam Silver in attendance. So did he do something else? 
Well, I don't know, Andrew. Let's find out. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is another clip from the same game, apparently. Oh, he's being booed. Oh, look at his him. Crotch. I'd kick him off the team. That's not even worth the bad publicity. Yeah. You just look like an idiot at that point because you're down 0 to 2. Like, you're getting beat by the Sacramento Kings of all people. And there's Adam Silver, the bald guy. That's the NBA commissioner. He's like, yep. You see that right there? That's that's fifty thousand dollars in our pocket. <laughs> yeah. Because we're gonna find him. Interesting. Anyway. Yeah. Quit acting like a bunch of buzz. What are you? Y'all are out here. Y'all are getting to play a game for millions of I dollars. I was to say, what a gift to be in that position. And you can't seem to hold your emotions for you know yeah. just a few moments. I want you to find the teacher. All you gotta do is. Go to YouTube and pull up teacher versus student. Teacher versus student. <laughs> I mean, she put... And then the thing I noticed first was how short the teacher and the student shorts were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's teacher. see. What's a, what's a teacher doing with short shorts? That's not it. It's. I'm telling you, there's a million of these. Well, this one just happened a couple days ago. Uh, burp, 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 Type burp. in viral teacher versus student. It's Not a, fights, but it's a male female male but male teachers two females teacher versus student viral. Well, that's. I'm just telling you what it was coming up. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, there's just so many I'll just of these. Send it. I'll 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 YouTube it myself and send it to you. It's teacher Is this versus it? student viral. That's it. <laughs> I found it. Okay, so this thing says viral news. I have no context on what kind of clip this is. So if it, like, starts talking crazy or, you know, plays some sort of Democrat propaganda, I just just know that it wasn't me. I didn't do it. All right, here we go. All right, here we don't go. Let's try that again. What is, what is YouTube doing right now? What is this? All right. I don't know. Let's try that again. All right, here we go. Right now at 6, Rocky Mount Police are investigating after a fight between a substitute teacher and a student. It was all caught on video. Thank you for joining us. I'm Deborah Morgan. And I'm Gerald Owens. This fight was caught on a cell phone camera by someone in the classroom. Since then, people have shared it more than 800 times on social media. WRO's Destiny Patterson explains this all started over a cell phone. It started as an argument over a confiscated cell phone, oh, touch me. Oh, touch me. and it quickly escalated. Oh. 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 The scuffle ended with substitute teacher Xavier Steele and the unnamed student on the ground. Yo, girl, your booty hanging out. Steele's hands appear to be pressing down near the student's head, and the student screams. We got a teacher, cuz. took the student's phone. <laughs> the cell phones has no, got no place in class. And then you're going to go up there and jump on a teacher or fight a teacher. That is wrong. WREL obtained the Mama district's said, cell phone policy. That's what she gets. Wrong. She was within her authority to take it if the phone was visible or the student was using it. The district's assistant superintendent says the employee has the right to, quote, reasonably restrain the student if they're attacked and can defend themselves to the point that they are free of the threat or attack. Now, Betty Atcherson is also a substitute teacher. If you have not gone into a school recently to see how the kids act, you would just be totally surprised at the... Mm. I agree. I, I I can't wait for Peyton to be out of school because it's getting scary. Yeah, it's so bad. I, I almost told a story just now about the incident we had yesterday. Mm -hmm. Should we just tell it? I mean, as long as you don't think Peyton's going to care. Well, now he's not in trouble. He didn't have anything to do with I it. I know he didn't, but. <laughs> so this is j just an example. Are we back on the screen or are you just. Oh, <laughs> I just thought we would look at this. I mean, she's pretty, but. This pretty young lady here. Yeah. Um. So. 
there was something found on the school bus. All right. And it was a contraceptive. Is it what we call it? It was a condom. It was a condom. All right. <laughs> and you can imagine the horror of parents thinking, what is there a condom doing on a school bus? Chances are what happened was a kid thought it was funny and took it from home and was like, right. oh, guys, look at this. Um, well, P. Diddy's name came up in the conversation when they was trying to figure out who it was until they realized he didn't even ride the bus. So it was impossible <laughs> for him to do it. But that's just that just gives you some perspective about how school is now. Mm-hmm. You know, because they're, they, these, <clears throat> the, the, the information that comes to these kids, especially when it's like a sixth, seventh, eighth grade, and I know everybody's got them on social media and everything, they just get an endless amount of information and they grow up like way too fast. The disrespect some of them can render. But she says she it said shouldn't render. get physical. <laughs> As the adult that you have to try to contain yourself. While police are using the word assault, they have not announced any formal charges against either the substitute teacher or the student. The district says that Steve... Oh, it was a substitute teacher. Mm -hmm. How about that? Well, I'm sorry, but even if that was my child, I think that teacher was well within her rights. Because once someone hits you and comes at you like that, it's very hard to stop once you start defending yourself. Yeah, you know? I would just be like, listen, girl, you good? Just <laughs> pull your dress down because your hoo-ha's hanging out. Well, the first comment I left on the first time I saw that video was, you know what? We couldn't have our shorts or skirts above the knee in school, and this teacher's cheeks were literally hanging out in the video. Mm. So, so. Yeah, whatever. I, it's, it's, <laughs> she's good. I mean, if you ask me, she's fine. Leave her alone. I mean, <laughs> I'm she's not a, bothering her. I just was a little jealous that we had to do the fingertip test well, all through school. And For this lady, though, they should <laughs> just leave her alone. Don't mess with oh, her. Yeah, Let her yeah, keep yeah. subbing. Um, you know, she subs. I bet those kids won't act up in her classroom again. <laughs> That's one thing. Also, these subs don't make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Like, leave them alone. Unless they're just doing something awful. Just whatever. I saw this other clip. And I know this is a clip-heavy show, and for those of you that are listening on the podcast, I'm sorry. Go to YouTube. You can watch these videos with us. Yeah. Um, A Toyota dealership out in California where two managers just started throwing haymakers on each other. And I have no idea the context. I mean, I can find out through the story. I'm assuming haymakers are punches? Yes. Okay. Big boy punches. Okay. (laughs) And... uh, it was just kind of weird to see employees at a car dealership uh, fight. But, you know, if you think about it, I've never worked in that industry, but when you've got people working there, they're each jockeying for position to make a sell because that's how they make money. So I can imagine tensions get high between coworkers mm-hmm. about when somebody pulls on the lot, they're like, oh, who's going to take it? That's why, that's why car lot people are so pushy because you're buying a car, their paycheck defend, depends on that. So... Maybe that's what happened here. I don't know. But they fighting. Oh, jeez. Oh. oh, this is a nice dealership. These guys are dressed nice. And those are real haymakers. <laughs> Way. The country club is getting down. This is crazy. <gasps> I'm telling you guys, you guys, I'm going to put it on the You guys, I'm going to put it on the chair right now. You'll go home now. Somebody threw a shoe. Threw something. It's insane. You'll get out of my dealership now. What's going on? Something tells me they're about to get back in the cut. Hope somebody's running. Where's he going? Everybody's got their phone out. I get nervous anytime anyone even raises their voice in public now. Leave the lot right now. Yeah, we had a situation where we were at the public's pharmacy, and these two dudes start screaming at each other. Mm-hmm. And it it's not like if a fight breaks out, that's fine, whatever. But if um, you know, somebody pulls out a gun, then all of us in the general vicinity, like, we're well, in we trouble. Were, yeah, we were kind of trapped because we were in the drive through and it, all we, the only perspective we had was that there was a man that was yelling back towards the building. We couldn't see who he was yelling at. And 
a girl pulling him away, saying, stop, just come on, just come on. And he's like trying to aggre- like aggressively go back the other direction. And then when we finally turn the corner, there's like 10 men standing at the front of Publix. It, it, like, he could have been in a fight with the people of Publix. I don't know, yeah, unless they were just out there to like. kick him out. It looked like they threw him out. And, mm-hmm. and that's who he was yelling at. But Well, don't be a thug. Don't be a criminal. <laughs> don't don't cause problems. Just be a normal human being. What Otherwise, is normal anymore? <laughs> I don't know. But if you don't figure it out, you're going to end up in prison. Well, that's normal the is line. acting like these people that are acting right now. Like That's the normal now. Now, when it comes to prison, I don't know if you've seen this, but in El Salvador... They take their gang members and their most violent criminals and they put them in this maximum security prison Mm -hmm. that is should be the standard for every prison for the worst criminals. I mean, this is the most fascinating thing I've ever seen because it's it's so it's so deliberate. It's so structured and it's honestly it's humiliating for these people. But these are the worst of the worst. And crime has. dropped to historic lows in El Salvador because they've got a very, uh, I I would dare say he's a Trumpian type um, president in El Salvador Mm -hmm. right now. Like, he's great. He's fantastic. If he wanted to come here and just, you know, if we could just doctor a birth certificate and you could become our president, I'd be okay He's throwing down the gauntlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to see the footage from this prison and how this operates. This is, I'm telling you, absolutely fascinating. It looks like a sea of skin and tattoos. These images released by El Salvador's government shows the transfer of about 2,000 inmates stripped to their shorts and with their heads shaved to what's been dubbed the country's new mega prison. It's the biggest prison in the Americas and will be home to 40,000 inmates, including some of the most violent people on the continent consists of 236 prison blocks and a factory where inmates will work in textile workshops, build furniture, paint and more, and is equipped with state-of-the-art technology to prevent jailbreaks. The incarceration capacity of this new facility is more than double the country's current total capacity. <laughs> Think about that. That's crazy. And, mm-hmm. and, and you, we see stories on a regular basis of people breaking out of jail, escaped inmate, alert, be on the lookout. Like, we had stuff like this. We don't have to worry about it. Yep. Come on, come. And I agree with them working too. Yes. Like working eight to ten hour days. No TVs. Jail sucks. Make some nice furniture and sell it at That's a right. discount price. That's right. Be like, we'll give you a great deal on this because a, 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 a M13 murderer made it. And you're you're paying your victims reparations right. while Switch you're that- in there. Yes, exactly. And that 30,000 inmates distributed across 20 prisons. The wave of arrests is unprecedented in the Central American country, which has suffered decades of brutal gang violence. Bukele is targeting members of two powerful crime organizations, Barrio 18 and MS-13. But we know that the murder... You see that? You see the remorse... That guy had for what he had done, he's basically saying, hey, if I could go back and do it all over again. Not a lot of people say that, mm-hmm. especially people that are hardened criminals in prison. And this guy is like, this is this is hell. And if I could change my ways, I would, which tells me that, that there's a good chance that that guy, if he were to get back out in society, he might make different decisions. That's what you do. You you got to make. And there's mm-hmm. so many places that make prison or jail a place that it's a cakewalk is not that bad yeah it's easier than living on the outside for a lot of these people because it's not just for that one person it's for that person who goes back to their neighborhood their hood and tells everybody else else it's out there gang banging hey listen this. if you if you get locked up it's not going to be a big mm-hmm. deal that's what happens now but if they were coming back to the hood with a different message that kid or that dude or that woman may stop selling drugs Mm -hmm. or stop doing whatever because instead of them saying, ah, it's not that bad, just do your time and get out, they're saying, no, you don't want to go there. (laughs) Look at me. Look at me solving the world's problems. I'm so good and I'm so smart. You are smart, Andrew. Um, 
What else we got? You got anything else to bring to the table? Yeah, I had something, and now I can't remember what it was. Oh, God. I know. I hate when that happens. I did want oh, to. I do remember. Okay. Um, did you see it? I have not fact-checked this yet, so you might want to go ahead and fact-check it for me. But I saw an article today where a couple killed themselves doing like a ritual via guillotine so their heads would roll into the fire <clears throat> to complete their ceremony. Did you see that? It I was, think I saw um, it on Breitbart. Was that true? It was on Dumb Ways to Die yesterday. Was it really? Yeah. Oh, I feel stupid. Now I feel <laughs> dumb. <laughs> I saw, it, I saw it today, and I was like, you've got to be kidding. Yeah, we had a very gruesome Dumb Ways to Die yesterday, and that was um, that was the third <laughs> I'm one. I'm sorry. But, you know, it is true. It's like in an Indian village. Um, oh, my God. And these people were, like, well-respected in the community and helped everybody and prayed for people. They did, like, daily prayers in the village. Um, and then they left a suicide note, and they did a homemade guillotine, and they chopped their heads off. I love you, honey, I'm not ever going to... Yeah, we, my head off with you. Sorry. We discussed that and decided, you know, there's different <laughs> routes. You know, because you, you got to think at some point while they're putting that thing together, you know, there's, uh, you know, husband, wife, time bonding over making a couple guillotines. And you know, I think at some point the, the, the husband's like, listen, Martha, why don't we, why don't we do something else? Why don't we take up knitting? Why don't we play Fortnite? Why don't we play Fortnite? <laughs> why don't we go on a date? You know? Yes, why don't we go on a date? Uh, it's, a, it's something for another show. Anyway, <laughs> this is the last thing I want to show y'all okay. before we get out of here. Show us. All right, so this is just called Real Life Bumper Cars. It's basically chaotic instances uh, happening in in cars, and it's usually got to do with erratic, angry people. We've mm -hmm. all seen it. You know, Somebody just starts smashing into cars in the parking lot because they're pissed off about something that's kind of the general gist of this um and i just personally enjoy watching it oh my god babe what's going oh my god oh my god <laughs> yeah he's trying to get away from the police oh my god yeah, yeah there's two cops right there well, so he's trying what's to escape oh my god Jesus, what's going on with that car man how are they not just shooting the guy <laughs> shooting the tires out the cop is him up in the car. Oh! 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 Don't you think if you're in that situation, like, good lord, how, do you really think you're going to get away? I mean, it looks like they are. And it's probably a stolen car. Probably. I mean, most of these people that go to stores. Oh! Oh. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, this is why I stay home and do shit. <laughs> Get out of the car! Oh, this person, I remember this story. This person stole the car. And she's trying to Get the <laughs> look at the door. Why, oh why, god. Why are people putting themselves in harm's way? Who cares about the car? Let her go. No kidding. <laughs> she ain't playing, dude. They Strawberry finally, shortcake. What are you gonna do? They finally get her out of the <laughs> get her out of the car, and they've got her on the ground. I don't remember the story, but it was something about her still in the car. And it's a he, Sonata. You gotta watch those Sonata drivers. Yeah, for real. Three guys are holding her down. The strawberry hey, shortcake's on her back. Us. She the van. Oh, that's the Ooh, one I was thinking her. of. <laughs> Wait, well, she got some look front end damage on oh, that that's guy. That's because she's backing up and hitting every car in every parking she's space. Crazy. Look at her. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll go to the other side and hit that side and go back to the other side. Look at her. <laughs> well, she just gave that one a love tap. <laughs> Y'all people she, have lost their minds, I'm telling you. you. Think this You're going is, crazy. She's hitting every car. You think you think this is an instant? This is like an apartment complex, and she just hates her neighbors. No. Oh, what an idiot! I don't understand. Let her do what she's doing. Get out of the way. Yeah, you are out of your mind because all all it takes is you slipping, and you're not going to be able to get out of the way. And hey, how about this? If she's unhinged enough to do this, she's unhinged to get out with a gun. You know, for real. Don't hit my car. I just got it waxed. Move out of the way. Move. Yeah, what are you doing, she lady? She wants to film it. Because, you know, 
If, you, if you're acting like that, you pretty much deserve to, to get, get hit. run over. I agree. Let him do it. Sir, sir. Get out of the car. Let her do it. Sir. Let her do it. I'm We're trying to film it for the gram. Oh, my God. These people. <laughs> They've all got their phones out recording. You're at it. <laughs> Why are people so out of their mind? They feel like they've got to intervene. You're you're not Superman. No. Like, you, and, and we're talking about property damage here. If you're trying to intervene and save somebody's life, that's one thing. But you're talking about somebody's just hitting cars, right? Like just and she's not even going fast. She's just love tapping those. Cars. Just let it go, <laughs> let it go, and watch, and don't worry about it. It's just like the the meme of the look at that meme. I used to do it all the time. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Just stand over at the car and go, would you look at that? Would you look at that? And that's it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> yep. People are out of their mind. Well, uh, I think that's a wrap for this week's Over the Line podcast. Yeah. I feel like it was pretty successful. Yeah. Uh, again, for those of you that are listening to the audio version, make your way over to YouTube. No, go oh, to the God. website and click the link. Yes, that's what I meant. Yes. Go to the website, look for the YouTube icon, okay? It's got all our socials on there. Click the YouTube icon. That'll bring you all of our YouTube videos, including the interview with Will the Chub Father. Absolutely fantastic. You got to go watch or listen to that. Uh, there have been a ton of people, I hadn't told you this, but a ton of people listening to that podcast already. Good. It's uh, may even set a new record for the first 24 hours of releasing it. Good. Which is uh, which is huge. So thank you all for doing that. Yeah, and when you go to YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Yes. So we can try to get that channel back over 1,000. Because once we get over 1,000 people again, we can go live on YouTube again. That's right. So even if you don't do the YouTube thing, just go subscribe for us. Just subscribe and pretend like you're a yeah. you do YouTube. That's it. That's all we're asking you That's to do. That's it. All right. We are out of here. And until next time. Bye, guys. See you, calls. Oh, no.